Hey guys, Billy Davidson, Davidson Pressure Wash Painting, Hammond, Louisiana. I got this little um, this little box in today. This little fella was sitting at my front door this morning, very early. So it's something I ordered two or three days ago. Really wasn't um, thinking it was a come in today, but I was happy to see that it was. As we all know, uh, in the power washing industry, uh, the key to our success is how efficient and uh, you know, the strength of the bleach that we can apply to a structure, our sodium hypochlorite. So, I wanted to make this little video. It's very early Monday morning, last Monday of September 2019. Got me a little cup of decaf coffee here, so I wanted to make this video to show y'all what I got here. Um, you know, we have several methods of applying our sodium hypochlorite 12.5%. To a structure obviously we don't use the 12.5 that's a concentrated form so one way obviously is our soft wash pump we know that and we can do we can make that solution as strong as we need to or you know in the industry we use the term as as hot as we need to so that's that's a given we're not going to talk about a soft wash pump today um secondly there's an x jet uh, we know that would draw 40 percent solution uh, straight out of the uh, bucket that sits there right there by your feet pros and cons of that is um you know what a pros is that you know you can throw 40 percent which is uh you know 40 percent of 12.5s you know over four percent you know so um you know just depending on uh you know the how st strong the solution is a lot of times that's just way too strong but then you have the the on the contrary you have the the problem of all the overspray, you know, it atomizes the water just a little too much. So you got too much PSI coming out of that X jet, which is about 500 PSI. If I had my way, I would probably lower the PSI on that X jet probably to around 250 to 300 and not atomize it so much. But, you know, it is what it is. So the third way would be use one of these downstream injectors. And um, this is a little... Uh, data sheet or something. We're not going to go through that. Um, downstream injecting, as we all know, uh, if you get lucky and get a high draw downstream injector, you get a one to five ratio or 20%. So if you got, you know, 10, 10 in the bucket, you grow, throw in two on a wall, that's on a 50 to 100 foot hose with the right orifice on your wand. Um, you know, that can get kind of convoluted because then you get the back pressure of the gun, the orifice you're using. So most of the time, you're not going to throw 2%. You're probably going to throw 1, maybe 1.25, which is, you know, 1 and a quarter. And a lot of times, hey, you know, that's good enough. Uh, that's all we need. Sometimes we have to do two or three applications with it, but it's fine. So the second uh, part of downstreaming would be to use one of these. This is something new. Well, it's been out a little bit. It's kind of new to me. I hadn't really paid much attention to it. Let's see what this is. This is a little this packing or something in there. So, this is a downstream injector. And its um, capability is to throw 30%. Probably, uh, from the data I read, on a 100-foot hose and... Um, you know, like an orifice, uh, like a 00 point, um, I guess a 0080 or something like that. I, I'm going to try a different one. So this is what we call a dual barb downstream injector. And, you know, it's without the quick connects. And obviously it's got the little protective caps on it for the threads. So you're going to put your kick quick connects on this or either... Uh, you know, if you're going to hard plumb it in, which I don't recommend that, I'd just put your stainless quick connects on it. And, um, you know, watch your flow. There's an arrow somewhere on here. I can't quite see it um, for your flow. But the key to this is, is having, from, from the, the information I read on it, these two barbs on it has to be the same hose length and, you know, going down into your, uh, your bucket of SH. So they need to be identical hose length. Um, that's going to give you identical coefficient drag on these little quarter inch ports. Now, I'm thinking that depending on the hose that you use, 
you might could reduce your coefficient drag or you or even reduce that parasite drag a little bit inside of that hose so i'm going to play with it so you know uh, just the stats on this if you got 12 and a half in your bucket 12.5 percent sodium hypochlorite in your bucket now this is without surfactant because you know surfactant does thicken things up and that's going to increase what we call the lift pressure or the siphon pressure so without surfactant 12.5 in the bucket, this would give you, um, my math, 30%, 3.75% out the wand. Now, I'm thinking I might can increase that. I'm going to do a little bit of testing on it. I'm going to try to find some hoses that are really, really smooth to reduce my parasite drag. And I'm going to try to find some that's maybe flared a little that will fit here and maybe flare out another quarter of an inch on one end. I don't know if I can find that, or I might have to heat it up and stretch it, kind of give it a wide mouth down, uh, you know, kind of open up the mouth. I think that's going to reduce my coefficient drag significantly. If I can reduce it by even 10 or 20%, that's going to probably give me, instead of 3.75, that might give me as high as 4% uh, draw rate, which would be, life changing, you know, game is a game changer. So we're going to try that. Another thing I was thinking about fluid dynamics a bit, and usually we downstream out of a pail that, uh, you know, usually this is up two or three feet higher and then the pail sitting on the ground with your hoses running in that. I'm thinking about trying to bring my pail up higher, even with my downstream injector. That way we don't have the, um, the coefficient drag of having to pick up that fluid two or three feet. Ideally, I think if you could have your your downstream injector plumb to a tank that was a little higher than a machine, maybe um, even a foot or two higher, you would actually have a gravity feed pressure, you know, on the downstream injector. I hope that makes sense. I think that would eliminate some coefficient drag, parasite drag, and even your lift pressure. So. We're going to try it out. Again, this is a um, dual barb downstream injector. If y'all need some information where to get this and the price, uh, reach out to me. My number is 985-345-0778. Uh, I think I paid, um, I don't even know. I just, I clicked stuff and ordered without looking at the price. I think it was maybe 20 or $30 each and I ordered a couple of them. So actually one of them is for a good buddy of mine that I ordered. I'm going to give him give him one because he helped us out. Actually, I'll give him a shout out. Kevin in, out there in Baton Rouge. I know you're probably watching this. So this one is, um, i get it out with one hand here. This one's identical. And when I see you either Thursday or Friday of this week, I think we're going to meet up and do a job together. I'm going to um, give you this. I was going to. I might go ahead and put some quick connects on it for you, but I'm not sure. I forget how your machine's plumbed. I don't know if it's male, female, or female, male. Either way, I'm going to get it set. Or if you see this message, just text me, and I'll plumb it for you. So I got you an identical one there. It's kind of hung up in the bag here. There we go. Um, so these two are identical. Like I said, I think there's $20 or $30 each, and draw rate's 30%. So we'll see. Um how it works out, you know, if I can throw 3.75% sodium hypochlorite on a wall, it means I get to go home earlier that night. Now, obviously, you might not can do this, um, you're probably not quite strong enough to do shingle cleaning. We'll see. I mean, I, when I do my shingles, I like between 4 and 5%. I just don't think I'm going to get there with this. It would be great if I did. But that being said, I might can still pre-treat my shingles. If I can get close to 4% draw rate, um, you know, that I can pre-treat um, and then come back and hit it with the air diaphragm or a 12 volt. So, you know, it just depends. Now, what I do like to do, if y'all are into downstream injecting, I don't run my machine 100% power when I'm downstream injecting. A couple things on that. Um, our flow rate on... A uh, eight gallon per minute on what our downstream tips are actually it's 10 gallons a minute. These are only rated for eight gallons a minute. So we're going to be over diluting um, 
our ratio here. You know, we're going to be out running our ratio. So what I like to pull mine back to about 60%, maybe 70%, you could still shoot something 45 feet away, uh, maybe even 50 feet away in low wind conditions, even on 60% power. So 60% power is going to give you on that 10 gallon per minute machine, obviously about six gallons a minute. Now this is rated for eight. So you still going to get your draw rate probably at around that 30% but you're going to have less dilution. So we might can achieve 4%. You know, that's the goal. It, it's, it doesn't seem like a lot to go from 3.75 to 4, but um, that's a wide gap to cover in downstream, and, you know, if you're familiar with it. So maybe we can reduce our coefficient drag or our parasite drag or even our lift pressure and get to that 4%. You know, we could pre-treat aggregate, uh, you know, sidewalks. I mean, you can lay down some heavy degreaser or some uh, calcium hypochlorite would be good to, to downstream through here. I think these are ceramic ball bearings in there. I'm not sure. I, I understand that they might be acid compatible. I'm not going to pull no HCL through it just because of the fact of you pressurizing HCL. But anyway, again, on your surfactant in these buckets, you know, it, it does make it sudsy, but then it thickens it up. So you're going to increase your lift pressure. If you're going to use a surfactant, heavy surfactant, I would definitely not have your uh, your downstream impale below this. I would at least try to make it lateral where it would draw from the side into here instead of from down, or down low up. Or if somehow you can pick it up higher and let it be gravity fed into your downstream injector. So anyway, I hope this helps. Um, for the new guys out there that are watching the channel, um, I am going to do a, uh, test run on, on this one later on this week. we got so much going on. I got to find a time and place to be able to do it. And I'm going to upload that video separately and we're going to go through all the technical specs of it. We're going to do a draw rate test, um, output test. We're going to probably even do, um, yeah, just see how well the SH activates going through here. So you know, that being said, if you want to like, subscribe, share this, that way you'll be notified. It can help you out tremendously. And that'll take the guesswork out of it. I know sometimes the equation, the math equations can get a little crazy trying to do this for the new guys. Um, and then again, depending on what, what strength SH you're pulling, you know, if you might, you might only be pulling an 8.25 and you're trying to pull 30% out of that and you want to try to figure out what you need to do. Uh, sometimes we'll get it from from the factory, and we we running higher than twelve and a half. You know, we might be pulling fourteen percent out the bucket, and of course, this is going to, you know, pull thir uh, drop it down to thirty percent of that. So, uh, I'm really excited about it. Dual barb downstream injector nozzles. If y'all want a couple of these, hit me up. I'll send you the lady's uh, name and number where you can order. Uh, she'll ship them right over to you, and you'll have them. I recommend buying more than one. You know, uh, even though the, these are really high-grade materials and stuff, it might only last a month or two. But then again, you know, they $30, $40, whatever they are, I mean, in a month or two, what you going to make? $30,000 with it, you know? So, I mean, if it quits drawing, throw it away or either experiment with it. So, anyway, hope this helps. Uh, again, my number is 985-345-0778. I am Billy Davison, the owner of Davison Pressure Wash and Painting, and I'll talk to you all soon.